What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and this is R Factor 2 where today we're going to be driving the newly released Honda NSX. We're going to be driving here at the somewhat newly released Tiger Moth Aerodrome which you guys will probably recognize by a different name which we can't use that name due to licensing reasons. But it is the perfect track to test out a streetcar. This is the second official streetcar available for R Factor 2 and as official ISI content it is available to all owners of R Factor 2. So if you have R Factor 2, why are you watching this video and not driving this car yourself? That is the question. I'd like to say that this car looks positively spectacular. It's one great looking car. Job very well done. But here at Tiger Moth, standing starts are all the rage. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and go. And I'll go ahead and put a time lap at the end of the video because, well, I've been driving around and having some fun and I've gotten myself black flagged. <laughs> ah, yes. Which isn't necessarily surprising because, well, that's just how things kind of work. But yeah, If you're familiar with this track, you might understand why. I mean, obviously, if you cut the course or you take a different layout or a different turn for the sake of just having some fun, it'll black flag you, which is kind of unfortunate, but kind of necessary to make this track work as... I think most people would like it to work. Maybe in the future they will release a version with basically no timing at all, no tire stacks or anything like that, open up the whole field and just have a blast. But this track does include multiple different locations and layouts uh, that are less recognizable than this one using the perimeter roads of this airfield. In general, those layouts are very fast and very fun in cars like this, or uh, alternatively, the historic cars. But the NSX, the NSX is the star. Some of you guys more familiar with R Factor might be saying, wait, wasn't there a uh, R Factor 1 NSX mod? And the answer is yes. That mod was done by someone in Niels. Someone being the name that the guy chooses to go by. Not me forgetting the guy's name, as I say the same thing every single time I bring that guy up. But doing the 3D uh, models and everything like that, whereas Niels was doing the physics. And that car was. Well, either the best streetcar available for R-Factor 2 or the second best streetcar available for R-Factor 2, in my opinion. Excuse me, R-Factor 1. In which case, if it wasn't number one, then the Corvette C6 by the same guys was number one. Just kind of depended on what type of mood I was in. How much power slide did I want on that particular day? So it already had that going for it. Then the Pano's Roadster, the other streetcar available in R-Factor 2. That car is a blast to drive, very fun, very nice, enjoyable to drive, very challenging to drive as well. So it had that going for it. So when they announced that they were going to be making the NSX for R-Factor 2, bringing the R-Factor 1 mod forward into R-Factor 2 officially, I was pretty darn impressed. I was very excited. And fortunately, this car doesn't uh, disappoint. It's the same 3D model and textures and everything like that, upgraded to R-Factor 2 specification. New physics here for R-Factor 2, done by ISI themselves. And yes, this car is actually licensed, that's why they can actually call it a Honda NSX, rather than something like a Fonda SNX, or a Murasama. <laughs> Come on, who remembers that? As I understand it, the story actually goes that uh, this car was so well received in R Factor, and R Factor 2 kind of needs more content in general, anyways, that ISI actually went ahead and got a license for the NSX. They already had a Honda license and a relationship with the Civic touring car that they have. Which is also one of the best cars available in R Factor 2. Maybe there's a Civic or a Honda Love Affair there. Maybe there's a Honda Love Affair there. But uh, 
they actually pursued a license to get this car. That way they could go ahead and bring it in as official content, which I'd say, brilliant decision. <laughs> brilliant decision. And, you know, some of you guys might be thinking, oh, wait, you're they're using a modder's work and making it official. That <laughs> Come on, guys, do it yourself, you know. They don't rely on the community. I'll also say that someone does work for... Uh, there's a lot of work for uh, Riza Studios, and, well, they're commercial, so it's not necessarily all that shocking or anything like that. There's definitely a commercial quality mod in R-Factor 1, and, you know, it's definitely well worth being official content within R-Factor 2. If you're familiar with the R-Factor 1 mod, you might remember there were a multitude of configurations available to reflect some of the changes done to the NSX throughout the years. And the same has been brought forward into R-Factor 2 where you still have you know, your different engines available. We're driving with the base 270 horsepower 3 liter. There's also the Type R 3 liter putting out 280 horsepower. And then the 3.2 liter 300 horsepower version that they used later on in the NSX's life. Different transmission, 5-speed transmission, 6-speed transmission. U.S. gear ratios, Japanese gear ratios, because everybody loves that uh, JDM legit transmission, you know? And even a four-speed automatic transmission, which I'm not going to lie, I haven't tried and have no intention on trying, but uh, yeah. Different suspension, stiffer suspension, softer suspension, different size tires. There's a whole multitude of ways to configure the car. There are, I think like 28 different options to choose from. Which uh, is a lot. Left hand drive, right hand drive, base model, and then... Well, because you can't do a Honda streetcar mod without it. Type R! Because we all know that that little R makes everything so much cooler. And it does, right? So just a variety of different configurations available, and all of them are a blast. And, you know, the thing that made this car so much fun in R-Factor 1 and so very popular in R-Factor 1 was the fact that it was so transparent, so natural to drive. And you, you felt connected. It's very easy to get immersed into the car, get into the car, and feel like you're driving the car. You know, have better control over the car because you feel like you're actually driving the car. Here in R Factor 2, same story. You know, it's. I don't want to necessarily spend too much time on an R Factor, R Factor 2 comparison because I'd like to kind of talk about that in a future video where I'm going to be driving the Type R just for demonstrations purposes. But if you think about the current trend in gaming for HD re releases, even of fairly recent games. <laughs> HD re-releases and remasterings. This is kind of the same thing. You know, when I got into this car here in R Factor 2, it felt familiar. It felt different, but familiar. You know, it wasn't like, you know, this car was entirely radically different than, for example, the R Factor 1 version. It felt like the same car, only some notable differences. And honestly, I'd say that this car is a bit easier to drive than the R-Factor 1 version. Although I think a lot of that is just kind of down to the tires being a little bit more forgiving. Because I, as far as I know, R-Factor 1 doesn't support tire deformation in any, any sense. I'm not sure if the R-Factor 1 physics for that car had it kind of hacked in there and artificially simulated in any fashion, but... You know, here in R Factor 2, the tires do deform, and it does feel a little bit more progressive, a little bit more tangible. Whereas the R Factor 1 version kind of was a little bit slippier, a little bit peakier with its grip delivery. But still, you know, it felt very familiar and a very fun car to drive in both, both sims.
been seeing a lot of people complain about struggling with understeer or oversteer to chronic degrees. Or at least they're making it sound like it's almost undrivable. And a lot of that comes down to it's a streetcar. <laughs> it is a streetcar, and even though it is the NSX, and you think of the NSX as being this like almighty car that like was Zeus in the streetcar world, you know, in the 90s. You know, it, it still is a streetcar from the 90s. It may have been able to run around with Ferraris back in the day, but, well, this thing has the 0-60 to 60 time that uh, it's not that much faster than a uh, Honda Accord V6 today. So, yeah, just put that in perspective for yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, as they like to say, but... You know, if you treat the car like you own it, drive it like you own it, not like you stole it. You know, the car is very, very easy to drive. And I think you can see here, we're not really struggling with oversteer. We're, in fact, struggling with understeer. But that is a street car. You know, you'd expect to see a little bit, uh, a little bit of understeer, and it does transfer into oversteer as you put the power down. And I think with higher speed corners, you know, you would see a little bit more neutral handling, maybe a little bit more bias towards oversteer. But at lower speeds, not so much. Is going to understeer a little bit. The suspension is is quite soft, you know, compared to a race car. So you just got to drive it like a street car, like you should, you know. Be gentle with it, caress it, feel it. Just enjoy it. Savor it. And if all else fails, say screw it and drive the Type R. A Type R will make any driver look amazing. I am pretty darn sure. But it is pretty interesting that you can go back and forth between the base model and then the Type R. and You can, you can really tell the differences and it's really apparent that the Type R is definitely circuit oriented. You know, it's not even the difference in the power. I mean, it's only 10 horsepower difference. It's just everything. You know, coming out of the corners, the car has a lot more grip. It's a lot less prone to uh, sliding around on corner exit. It's, in my opinion, a little bit less fun to drive because it does. Well, it's easier to drive because of the fact that it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is go faster on the circuit, but for me, half the fun with streetcars is the fact that they basically suck. <laughs> but they allow you to do that because of the fact that they suck, and that's what makes it enjoyable. You know, that, is the, uh, that is the appeal of streetcars in these sims for me. Just Having fun sliding around, the enjoyment that you can have when you are driving in a uh, faster fashion, you know, driving for lap time to minimize your lap time like you would in a race, because they do have a different feel to them, but I know I'm not just, really not just a huge fan of racing streetcars in general, but when it comes to driving them, they're a blast. So remember, if you're having trouble, drive the Type R. It'll make you feel like a good driver, even if you're not, okay? Car is like basically turning on grip hacks, script cheats, god mode all at the same time. Not that it's unrealistic or anything like that. But that car is just... <laughs> it's, it's just hugely impressive, the difference between this base model car and then the uh, circuit-oriented Type R. But that's just too much fun, too irresistible, so I'm staying in this car. This car is so much better than the Type R, even though the Type R is definitely better at, uh, at the circuit lapping thing. But in terms of uh, comparison, especially with the Pano's Roadster, the other street car available within our Factor 2 officially, 
you know, this card does feel a little bit... A little bit uh, dull by comparison in terms of force feedback. Um, not that it's bad or anything. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not one of the most impressive feeling cars within R Factor 2. It does feel like it's a little bit filtered, and that stands to good reasoning because, especially here in this version of the car that I'm driving, we're driving with the early 90s stock, small little 16-inch tires. 16-inch tires on a car that's a borderline supercar. Yeah, that, those were the days, right? But, you know, they have much taller sidewalls than what you see on a modern, you know, street car, even a regular four-door passenger car. I mean, these sidewalls are ridiculous compared to what you see nowadays most commonly. It's like, those are certainly absorbing the bumps and providing that filtered feel. And if you choose to use the later model, you know, larger size tires, you do get a little bit sharper force feedback and the driving does change a good bit. And it's definitely noticeable which tires you're driving on from a feel perspective. You know, comparing to the Panos, the force feedback isn't as sharp, it isn't as raw. Uh, the Panos definitely, definitely is a bit sharper in terms of force feedback feel, from my perspective. But both cars are certainly easily driven, and the force feedback definitely assists in both cases. It's not holding you back, it's just kind of a different feel. But in terms of lap times, because that is somewhat uh, important, I think both cars, both the NSX and the Panos, would be better if they can race with one another uh, decently. In terms of lap time, and you know, you didn't have one car off in the sunset. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the NSX is faster at power circuits, even though it does have a little bit less power. 270 here in the base model versus 300 in the Panos. But uh, on handling circuits, interestingly enough, this is the thing I didn't really expect, even though I probably should have expected it, but it still shocks me. The Panos will actually outhandle the NSX. Well, I'll break the NSX. We'll get off the corner slightly better than the NSX if you can put the power down. If. It is definitely a good bit more difficult to do that than it is here in this car. But, uh, you know, that's not necessarily surprising because the Panos does weigh 2,500 pounds versus the NSX, which weighs, like, 3,000? And that was called Drifting with the Club Sport Wheel Formula Rim. It, it, it doesn't really work. I don't have anywhere to put my hands, man. If I had a full-size wheel, I would have caught that one easily. No questions asked, but uh, sometimes it'll get you. But yeah, actually, surprisingly enough, the Panos is is definitely the better handling car. Definitely the faster lap time car on uh, tighter, twistier circuits. For example, Moore's with an R Factor 2, which is a circuit I very rarely use because there's usually not anything to race on it that excites me. Although, I must say, the road cars, the Panos on the NSX on that track, very fun to drive. Very fun combination. You know, the Panos will hold its own against the NSX there. Whereas uh, here at some of the alternate layouts at Tiger Moth, which are a little bit faster, a little bit more flowing. You know, it's enjoyable to drive both cars at the faster circuits, but the NSX just has so much more top speed than the Panos. Which that's just down to the fact that the Panos has the aerodynamics of a brick. You can kind of race them, and they'll give you similar lap times depending on the circuit. It's enough that uh, it's exciting to, you know, race them against one another. But uh, they're not necessarily all that balanced. I would like to see ISI release the supercharged version of the Paynose Roadster. I don't know how much horsepower that car actually produces, but I guess it'd probably be 
providing you're not talking about the modern version where they just went crazy with the power. Uh, probably, I'm guessing, around about 400 horsepower, somewhere thereabouts, which would put the Pano's at pretty much the exact speed down the straightaway, I feel, as the NSX, which would be nice to see. Because right now it's about 20, 20 mile an hour difference at some of the longer straightaways, which <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Just that lovely, natural, easily recoverable, naturally recoverable slide. That's what made this car so much fun in R Factor 1. So it's going to make this car so much fun in R Factor 2. Which makes me say, roll on the Corvette. Which we've already heard that they are working on a third party affiliate Corvette, which is what this car is. I is starting to work more with the modding community and, and bring their work in as official, which is nice to see, in my opinion. Some people will say that, you know, it shouldn't be up to the community to finish ISI's game for them, but I think a lot of the uh, content is of such high quality anyways that, you know, to have it kind of filed away and a little bit more difficult to find, you know, for people who maybe aren't as active in the community or don't pay as close attention, you know, I think to have it as official content really helps put the best foot forward for R Factor 2, which we know there's going to be the Corvette, which we would assume would be done by someone in Neil's, that R Factor 1 version. And I'd assume that it'd be the same 3D model with ISI's physics uh, behind it, such as this car. You know, we know they were working with uh, Risa Studios to bring Interlagos into R Factor 2. We'll be using Game Stock Cars version of Interlagos and in R Factor 2 officially, which that'll be pretty neat to see. Another nice track. But, uh, then also they got the ovals that they're doing, where they're uh, doing some uh, work with one of the oval modding groups. I'm sorry, I don't pay too much attention to the ovals within R Factor. I know they're very popular, but I'm just not really a huge fan of them. Man, this car just... I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> so enjoyable. Honestly, if you're looking for a good place to learn how to drive... <laughs> learn how to drive in a sim. Some people would instantly say, drive the Skip Barber car because that's what it's supposed to be used for in the real world, but in my opinion, that car within R Factor 2 doesn't necessarily live up to R Factor 2. Uh, I don't think it's one of the better cars in R Factor 2. I think it's got a lot of silly things that the community just brushes under the rug, such as throttle braking, which, interestingly enough, people yelled about iRacing having <laughs> throttle braking and having that be a thing for years upon years, and then... Hey, look at it. It's a thing here in R Factor 2 with that car, but uh, it's a different story for a different time. <laughs> Fortunately, no throttle braking involved here. But, you know, I don't think it's one of the better cars within R Factor 2, whereas I think a car like the NSX here, a road car, you know, it's not as tricky to drive, it's more approachable, it's easier to get a grip on, it's easier to understand, but it's going to teach you a lot of the same things just not as uh, not as aggressively, but I think a lot of people will probably be put off by a more difficult learning curve. And look, like, look at that—the fuel light is on. <laughs> well, I've done too many laps. I'm about to run out of fuel. Ay ay ay! This car's too addictive. It's too much fun. I, I just can't stop driving it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this lap, and I'll put a. Uh, external replay external replay of the uh, trackside cameras that again should be almost instantly recognizable 
the end of this video. We'll finish up this lap. Let's go with a massive, massive silly slide here. <laughs> nope, poor line, poor line, poor line. Can't see the corner. <laughs> oh yes, this car is just so much fun. Highly recommend it. Try it out. If you're having trouble with it, it's, you find it difficult to drive, switch to the Type R and then instantly feel like the best driver in the history of the world. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Roll on the uh, last replay lap thing, the jigger that I talked about earlier. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. Bye-bye.